Today, August 26, 2021, Dan Carpenter, evil lovering Conneritis, Jackie Brown, and I, Don Brown, met at the Lovering Kiln on Hanson Road, Chester, New Hampshire. Actually bought it. It was a bank foreclosure. Property over next door here. So when he bought his property, he had no idea what this was. And he contacted the Historic Society and asked if we knew what it was. And I didn't even know it was here. I came down and took a look at it and um, realized what it was after I looked at it. Uh, Frank Machado was the fellow that owns the house that contacted us and he uh, he didn't know what it was and so it was kind of an interesting thing to go through the whole learning curve to figure out what it was and uh at the time, Don Brown was the president of the Chester Historical Society and realized it was a part of Chester's history that needed to be preserved. So he brought it before the society to take it on as a restoration project. As you can see from the photos, the structure was in terrible condition and I felt it would not last much longer without caving in. So we started the restoration project immediately. The first thing we had to do was clear the land. The work was done by Daryl Quinn, John Coleman, myself, Don Brown, and the property owner, Frank Machado. Next, we hired retired brick mason, Dick Glenn from Auburn, New Hampshire. Bricks were donated by Penny and Bob Henderson and Don Brown. We started the work on the project in the fall of 2015 and continued through the winter. Propane heaters had to be kept running day and night inside the structure through the winter to keep the cement from freezing. It was not easy being a mason's helper. I remember driving down to the end of the road and dipping buckets into the river for water to mix the cement and adding calcium into the mix so that it would not freeze. The restoration project took two years to complete. The original doors would have been made out of metal, however they were missing, so I built new ones out of wood to secure the structure. Today we are talking with Eva Lovering Conaridis. She worked here helping to make charcoal as a very young child. Her grandfather was Oscar Lovering. He built this kiln in 1924 and produced charcoal until about 1950. He lived in a house before the kiln on Hanson Road. First thing we had to do, well, the kiln was already built. My grandfather had built it. And he built the, the house that we lived in. So my father must have bought it from him or whatever. So we moved out here. And it took, I don't know how long to fill it up, but we'd go out in the woods and we'd bring this tractor out in the woods and we'd fill up the load it up with all the dead wood on the ground. We never cut any trees down or any branches. So to come and pick up all the dead wood in the tree. And then, and then bring it back and you keep doing that until you get the kiln filled. Then you seal it up and you start it burning. And every so many days you knock out a tub brick on the bottom row so that you keep it burning. And it took usually about five days or longer, at least five days to burn down. And then you have a day of letting it cool. Then you start bagging. And I, I don't know what size, I don't remember the size of the bag because everything's a lot bigger, a lot smaller now than it was when I was a kid. <laughs> they fill up quicker today. That must have been a pretty dirty job bagging. Yeah, but we used to go in the brick, the brick in the back of the house and play in the water. <laughs> and we had, and the land from the farmhouse came down to this land here. And there was a big field, it was all field land. And then there's a stone wall up here someplace. And on the other side of the stone wall was more fields that we had to bag. That don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of, it's it's a lot of work job. and it's dirty. But the only good thing was it kept the mosquitoes away. 
Well, I think the whole thing that really kept it together is how they incorporated it. That's a piece of railroad track or something yep. else. Yep. They bolted it together. Well, my and grandfather those go through. Was, my grandfather by trade was a he was a Ford's horseshoes and stuff like Black that. Blacksmith. Now well, a, see, the blacksmith pretty... needs, sorry, they need charcoal. Absolutely. That yeah. may be how he got, well, no, the family was already involved in, in charcoal. I don't know. I just remember well, I... according to Bernie, Uncle Bernie said from 1820 on, they were making charcoal. So you actually ran this kiln, you worked here? Yeah, when I was four or five years old. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and and what was the process to, to load it and actually fire it? Well, you, you go in the woods, you pick up all the dead stuff, bring it back, and you load it as far as you can load it, as full as you can load it. And then after you get it all loaded, you just seal, seal it, get it going, you seal it up, and you let it simmer. And then you, um, the first, you go, there was, used to be two rows of brick. So you like quench first, first two you quench out, and then another few, few days later you quench out some more all the way around so that it won't go out because it doesn't have air in mm -hmm. it. So it just smolders there? Yeah. yeah. How long would it take to get a week? A week? Mm -hmm. That was good because the smoke was keeping the mosquitoes away. Yep. <laughs> Now, I have read before that uh, prior to doing this, they used to dig a hole and they'd, uh, they'd get um, it going and they'd actually bury it and they'd let it smolder on the ground. Kind of like they, I think they, they bake beans that way and stuff and they bury yeah. them in the thing. Yeah. And they would read the smoke and when the smoke got to a certain color, they figured it was done and they would uncover it. But that was a very small load. Um, yeah. all, I mean, all I know is it took us a couple of days to bag it. Standing there so there's no foundation under it. So when we restored it, we dug down and we put a footing in both inside and outside where it was really bad to try to stabilize it uh, for the future. This back end was bad, the side was. I was wondering, I was surprised that it was still standing. Well, there was a tree built right against it. We had to cut a couple of trees that were yeah. growing into it. Yeah. Thank you, Eva, for sharing your memories with us today. It was an honor to meet you. Colleen Toll donated this charcoal bag to the Historic Society. Her dad, Chet Toll, had the same exact style kiln that he was operating down on Fremont Road. Next, we have a Manchester newspaper article dated 1955. It was about Bernard Lovering. He was the son of Oscar and he was the fourth generation of Loverings producing charcoal. His kiln was located in Auburn, New Hampshire, and in 1955, he had a very large operation. He was making 1,000 bags of charcoal per week. The need was fueled by the new craze of the backyard barbecuing movement. If you would like to visit the kiln, it is located on Hanson Road. Hanson Road is located in Chester, across the street from the cemetery on Route 102 at the Raymond Line.